All right, this is my next video out of this book by Carol Rothman, a series of bowl making videos, and I'm still doing practice bowls. I'm getting better as I go, but I still got a lot of things I want to refine. <clears throat> this bowl is, a, she calls it an eight petal bowl. As you can see there, she made it out of uh, walnut. It's a very, very nice looking bowl. Uh, the real trick to this bowl as in all bows, is, is, is cutting the pattern properly. But the sanding is what makes this one work. Uh, what it makes, you've got to be able to sand in those side those flutes. So I have this, it's what I bought this for. This is an inflatable sander. It's supposed to sand the internal areas. And, and I've got these sanding uh, little pads thing. That you, I got four different grits. And you have to get a little pump. Uh, you put you put your sandpaper on there and then inflate it enough so that it holds it on there. But you want as little air as you can get by with. Uh, so I've got that ready. I'm going to test that out once I get it cut out. But we're not there for that yet. Um, I'll have to learn how to use that, but it shouldn't be real difficult. The main thing I'm doing here is, as I'm moving forward, I'm trying to drill as small a hole as I can for the blade that I'm using. Uh, this one's only got three rings, so I only got three entry holes, and I've already drilled the holes. Now, she recommended the beginning a number seven, I believe, was a, a Flying Dutchman number seven. And I've, moved, I've changed to Pegas blades. I still have some Flying Dutchmans. Uh, but she said in a Pegas, she changed her recommendation to a Pegas. You could use a I'm sorry, it's a number nine flying Dutchman. In Pegasus, she said you could use a seven and possibly a five. So I'm using Poplar. Again, this is just going to be a practice a practice bowl. And uh, Poplar's not super hard to cut, and, and neither is uh, Walnut as far as that goes. But so what I've done is I've done some research on the size of the blades, the blade I'm going to use. I'm going to go with a number five. I'm going to try a number five. Pegas blade, and I have some of those. These are reverse geometry blades. She said either skip tooth or reverse geometry, and I, I like the reverse geometry ones. Uh, the Pegas blades cut really, really nicely. I really like them. So you got to look at the size. I want the smallest blade I can blade hole I can get, so I don't have as much sanding on those uh, uh, rings there. So for the uh, Flying Dutchman at the number five. Uh, you can go to their website. <clears throat> My, uh, Mike's workshop sells Flying Dutchman's, and he has all the sizes and the recommendations for drill bits. And Bear Woods sells Pegasus, and they do the same thing. In fact, you can download a PDF there that has the information on it. But I first pulled out a number five Flying Dutchman, and his recommendation was drill a hole with a number 60 drill bit, which is a .040 uh, size drill bit, four one hundredths of an inch. Flying Dutchman blade is supposed to be point zero three seven, And he said that would be difficult to get through if it's very thick. And then it's on this wood, it was, I drilled it, I had trouble getting it through. So I pulled out the Pegas number five and uh, went to his recommendations on, on bare woods. And the Pegas is a point oh four. Uh, o2 it's a little bit larger not much but just a little bit and it just would not fit through those holes so I, I dug through my drill bits till I found a 1.2 millimeter which is a a little over 0 0.05 and that worked great uh, that's it's almost equivalent to a number 55 blade they have a series of numbers is smaller than the number the larger the blade so I've drilled this, I drilled it first with the number 60, which is a .040. And I got it, got those drilled. And then I, I went back and I got the uh, 1.2 millimeter. And um, it came in a set of drill bits that I have there for a Dremel. And that was the second to, to the smallest blade in the set, a bit in the set. And I drilled them again. Now I had it. I, I set the angle on the on the drill press. I used the little little angle gauge that I made on the first bowl, 
a little piece of walnut that I cut at that gauge. I use it to set the angle. And it's imperative that you take an awl and, and make you a, a spot there because those blades are so small, they will deflect. Uh, they, they won't enter. You probably break it, in fact, before it ever start drilling. So you got to have your starting point. And uh, that's what I did. And I made that work. I got it drilled through enough. I had to, those smaller bits are a little short. You kind of have to work with them sometimes to get all the way through. But I've got these drilled with that 1.2 millimeter. The blade will go through. I've tested it. So the next step will be to get it over to the skull. And that's just, you got uh, four cuts here the external and then the three rings. Uh, again, you got to make sure you cut it accurately and have the right, the correct angle. And I'm going to use the same angle gauge I used for the drill bits and uh, cut these out. And then be the same procedure. Step step is the same as the other bowls. The only difference when you get in there is how you send uh, these curved surfaces. And I've, I've got all the sanding equipment that she recommended. A little pad sander for the outside and this inflatable sander for the inside. And this is going to be another learning experience. And I'm trying to improve every step as I go. I like getting the correct blade. And I'm going to cut this with a five. It may not, may not work. It may deflect internally. If that's the case, i got plenty of this poplar. I'll go back and I'll move it up to a seven. I don't have to drive a little larger bowl. Uh, larger hole and that's the reason uh, I'm using the five. I want to use as small a hole as I can to minimize the sanding. So let me get my saw set at the angle and I'll get it over there and get me a brand new number five Pegas reverse geometry blade and uh, we'll start cutting on it and it'll be the same process cut and mark cut and mark cut and mark and then gradually uh, glue it together and in this case, I'm going to sand the internal part, but I'm not going to sand the outside until I put the base on. So let me get to the saw and get it set up. All right, I've got everything set up here. Got that angle. It's the same little block of wood I used to set my drill press with. That comes from the very first bowl in the book. I said 28 degrees. And as you make these, you save them. You have them for the next bowls as you do. I've got a number five. Uh, Pegas uh, modified geometry blade. So I'm going to cut this outer ring first and then I'll see if I've got it right to get in through the whole entry holes or if I have to drill them again. Right, so far so good that cut very smoothly and nicely it doesn't look like the blade deflected at all uh, I've got it set up now through this hole it appears to be the drilled at the proper angle um, so one of the things you got to watch on this is the weight of the make sure the weight of the uh, blank is not pulling against the blade especially on that first cut you got a little more weight there it's not much of a situation right now where it tries to pull it down but it's easy to deflect that blade and get your angle off so i'm going to make the second cut and then take it over and start marking it and we'll see how it lines up with the first ring uh, the, the first ring lines up with the next ring as we go I took that over, laid it on the, 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 the ring of cough, laid it on top of the rest of the blank. If things lines up nice, I marked it. Uh, 
top and bottom according to these lines to keep everything lined up. So now we're going to cut this next one, and again, the uh, angle seems to be right. I got the other one off just a little bit off of the hole, which is critical. But I think this one's a little closer. I've got that one cut and marked. There's a photo of it. It's lining up real well. It looks like my drill holes were off maybe just a little bit. It's causing a little bit of a problem there, but it's not anything I can't sand out. The placement of those holes is just as critical as the angle. The angles are good, but I'm getting the placement off ever so slightly, but it's nothing major. So here was the last cut, and I'll be ready to do a little preliminary sanding and start gluing the, these uh, rings together. Well, I've removed the patterns, a little bit of light sanding, special on the surface is going to glue, <clears throat> and I've checked to make sure I have no gaps between the rings. So now I'm going to glue them and put them in the press, just these. I'll put the base on after I sand the inside. And if you've seen my previous videos, I've made an addition to my press. I've made some little spacers here, uh, two different sizes. i got a full set of each one, plus some spares, because this is just light pine, it might, they might break. And uh, that, that saves me some time on a smaller bowl. I don't have to spin these uh, wing nuts down on this rod as far. And uh, uh, this one, I probably won't need them on this one, but we'll see when I get it on there. So anyway, I'm going to glue this right now and get it in the press. I've got that squeezed down just enough to get a little glue squeeze out. I'm going to let that sit for five, ten minutes maybe. Then I'm going to take it back out, remove any excess glue, then put it back in for about half an hour or so. Well, I've taken it out. It's in about ten minutes. I scraped the excess glue. It wasn't much because I use glue sparingly on this, so I don't have a lot of excess to clean up. And it's difficult to sand. It gets gummy there at those joints. You get too much. Just need enough to glue it together. So now I'm going to put it back in for about 20 30 minutes. And then I'll start sanding on it. This one's not lining up as well as the last few bowls I made. I think my angle was slightly off there somehow. But I believe it's doable. The sanding is going to be the, the uh, 
really important part of this bowl because of the shapes and the shapes you want to create. Well, anyway, let me get it back in the press. And uh, we'll get to get to sanding here in just a little bit. Well, as you can see, I've removed it from the press. I've been uh, trying to learn how to use that little flexible uh, inflatable sander. It's very interesting. There is a learning process, and I'm, I'm learning it. I'm learning how to shape this. And as I make these bowls, I've learned three things are very imperative. And that's cutting angle accuracy and cutting accuracy and the accuracy of drilling the entry holes, not only by angle but in spot, in, in, in the exact spot you need. This one hasn't been too bad. I've got one little bit of a spot here that uh, i got a little bit of a drilling hole, entry hole still left there. And one other thing is imperative is lining it up when you glue it together. Uh, this one wasn't cut as accurately as it should have been. It was hard to line up. But I, I'm managing to sand it down and, and get the gaps off of it, as you can see. It's just, it didn't line up as well as the other bowls I've, I've done in the last two or three videos. And I obviously had that angle off a little bit, although I set it according to my little, little guide. But there is a process by which you can... Uh, test that as you go and adjust the angle and I'll, I'll look that up because I hadn't used it. I, I did read about it. I'll look that up in the book and before we start drilling or uh, sanding the outside I'll explain what she says to do to check that as you go. It hadn't been necessary for me before so I didn't even think about it until uh, I started trying to sand on it. So uh, that's the first grit uh, that I've gone through on the internal part. And I'm, I'm going to go down a couple of more uh, grits on the sanding and see how I can shape, make these lines straight. They're pretty pretty good. There's a few of them got a little bit of a wobble in them. That one's real good right there. Uh, I don't know how visible that is on the camera, but anyway, I'm going to get back over there. I'm going to change grits on my little sander, and I'm going to continue to sand the inside. Get the inside sanding sand it i'll put the base on it and we'll sand the outside with a little not the inflatable sander but a little flexible pad sander three more grits on that um, it's not perfect by any means um, i'm gonna call it finished i don't know that i'm gonna call it good but uh, it's smooth and everything's even it seems to be fairly symmetrical so I'm going to glue the base on, and then I'll get the little flexible pad sander and we'll do the same thing on the outside. Now I'll go through the same procedure. Put it in the press, I'll squeeze the glue out, and take it out and clean it, and then put it back in for 20, 30 minutes. I just wanted to catch up where I am, what I've been doing. I've got the primary sanding done. Uh, used on the external, I used the uh, my little sanding drum and then I used my little flexible pad. And that's two grits on that so far. Got the inside done with the inflatable sander, which is a learning experience all by itself to get the pressure right on it to keep the sandpaper on it. And I got the primary sanding on that. And what I mean by primary, I got all these rings to line up. Got all the gaps out of them. I got all the, uh, I think for the most part, this, these uh, grill marks out of it. And so now what I'm doing is I'm trying to thin. I'm shaping the bowl a little bit. First time I've really shaped one. You see how thick I am here. And I'm starting to thin it down. I'm going around thinning it down. You know, and her, the picture of hers, she's got a very thin lip on the end. And I'm going to work with that because that's, I haven't done that really up to this point. But that's what I'm doing right now. This kind of time consuming. And it's a learn as you go for me because I've never seen any real instruction on that. Uh, so uh, I'll continue with this and I'll be back in a little bit and hopefully uh, I'll have this lipped 
thin down and have it looking kind of decent. And uh, this is still a practice bowl, so I don't know how much of a finish I'm going to put on it, but I'll probably put some tongue oil or something on it. So let me get back to sanding, and I'll we'll check in with you later. Okay, that's a couple of hours of shaping on that. And uh, for the first time, I think it's okay. It's not great. I just tried to taper this up to pretty much a point, and I believe I did. As far as that goes, I think that's a matter of personal preference, what you want the finished product to look like and how well you taper it down and how you get the shape in. Now, it's not perfect. Some of these lines aren't perfectly straight. But for me, this is a learning experience, as all these bowls are still, and I guess will be always. But you can see how much more finished that looks when you taper that down like that. And that's the first time I've tried to do that. And I think for a first time it, it worked pretty well. So I'm going to uh, do a little more light sanding, a little, little lighter grit sanding, get a few of the scratches and what have you out of it. And make it look a little more finished. And then I'm going to put some tongue oil on it, I believe. And uh, see how well it looks then. Of course, this is popular. It doesn't really look great anyway. And for a practice bowl, though, I'm, I'm real happy with the way it's coming along. All right, I'm gonna call this bowl done. I'm gonna call it right here. Uh, I'm not unhappy with it, but it does have a lot of, of issues. I think it's pretty good for my first shape bowl. I'm not totally unhappy with it, but uh, the shaping could have been better. But from the first time, I think that's that's good. I just wanted to thin this end and, and taper it a little bit, make it look like it's a little bit flared, and I think I succeeded in that. Makes it look more finished. I uh, wet it down with some water, raised the grain and sanded it again. So there's a lot of sanding went into this. And then I put a little bit of tongue oil on it. Uh, my wife may want to decide she wants to use it for something, so I thought I would I would go ahead and, and finish it out. Uh, at least put a finish of some kind. I may put another coat on in a few days, let that soak in and get set up there. So anyway, I hope you like that. And maybe you've learned a little something. As, uh, my problem with this bowl is I had the angles off on everything a little bit. It made it much more difficult to sand. I was able to finish it. And I'm not unhappy with it, but there was a lot of work involved. And uh, I'm going to have to learn to check the angles a little better after I first cut the first two rings. She has a procedure and tells you which way to go, a degree or two, if, if, if they're not lining up and how they're not lining up. But I'll cover that in the next video. I'll double check it and show you what she says about what, what to do, which direction to go, and what, how many degrees. Depends on how it's lining up. So we'll cover that in the next video, which hopefully will be out in a week. And I hope maybe you learned by my mess ups so if you like that hit the like button and if you want to see the rest of these videos I'm going to continue through her whole book I'm not sure we'll make every single project but uh, I'm going to try to do the things that teach you some of the basics and so there's be several bowls made out of this book so thanks for watching uh, hope to see you in the next video